Well, welcome in the precious name of Jesus to Pure Ministries. My name is Robert Pears. In this episode, I want to talk about how we are living in last days. And the Lord is calling us to come and abide in that secret place and be swallowed up, consumed in His glory. The Word declares that we are the temples of the Holy Spirit. And when I look at the temple in the Old Testament days, how the glory would come and fill it, can you imagine being there and seeing the glory fill that temple? Yet you and I are blood-bought and we are the temples of the Holy Spirit. How much more when the glory fills this vessel should we have an impact on the society around us? In the early days of the church, the church was a blessing to the community in which it belonged. It changed the moral and spiritual climate. It had a true impact because they carried life and they were filled with the glory. I really pray that this message, where I'm going to share insight from Mariah Woodworth Etter, a woman who was truly a walking revival and awakening in the late 19th, early 20th century, will bless you and encourage you to live in that secret place, help you to abide there and be consumed in His glory. Father, we just come in the name of Jesus. We just ask you, Holy Spirit, teach us. We just want to learn. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart. And minister to us. Open the Word. Let the Word be a now word. Let it be filled with life. Let it challenge. And let it cut off all that needs to be removed. And let it bring forth a new freshness in our life. I thank you, Father, that Jesus would receive all the honor, all the glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. Now, in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verses 19 and 20, as I get there, I just want to share something. We are seeing in this hour a rise of people seeking something. And there is an awakening that's an occurring, but it's an awakening among false gods. People are seeking truth. And the problem is, the one voice that should be standing up speaking the loudest that has a life and the glory to it is the church, and the church remains quiet. Other churches and other religions are rising up and saying, we've got something, but they don't have anything in reality. We need to understand what we really have, and unfortunately, many believers don't know because they don't get and spend time in the secret place to know the Lord, because those that know the Lord will do great exploits. In the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, in verses 19 and 20, it says this, Woe to him who says to a piece of wood, Awake! To a dumb stone, arise! And that is your teacher. Behold, it is overlaid with gold and with silver, and there is no breath at all inside it. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. The Lord wants to come and dwell in you and I, to make known his presence in and through us, that the world might see him. But it's got to start with a holy fear coming in us and that we come and be silent before Him. There's these parallaxes of the kingdom that for us to be continuously moving forward, there must be a continuous waiting as a waiter looking at His face. Listen to this from Mariah Woodworth Eder. Let us try to realize His wondrous presence. We must all meet Him sooner or later as individuals. It's a good thing to be acquainted with Him now. And the answer or question we must ask ourselves is, do we know Him? And how deep is that? And it all comes out of how deeply we hunger and thirst for Him. Are we satisfied with simply dwelling on the outskirts of seeing and maybe occasionally tasting, but never knowing? This hour is truly late, and Jesus is coming soon. This is a time where we're seeing a separation. We're seeing ministers and ministries fall as God separates that which is His and that which is not. This is not a time to play in games, but it's a time for us to truly seek His face that we might, might have an impact. I believe that God is looking for those that are His to cry out, to groan, and say, God, I just want to be consumed by you. In Zephaniah chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. And Zephaniah is such a powerful prophetic word that I believe speaks to this hour, and it has a message to the church. 
In this verse, gather yourselves together. And I just want to stop there. You know, when we talk about the church, it is the gathering together of believers. And that term is often used regarding the church, the gathering together. So listen to this, gather yourselves together. Yes, gather, O nation, without shame. Before the decree takes effect, the day passes like chaff. Before the burning anger of the Lord comes upon you. Before that burning anger of the Lord comes. Before the day of the Lord's anger comes upon you. Uh, Edder would say this, This call is not to sinners, but to God's servants, to His children to eat the strong meat, ye meek of the Lord, who have wrought His judgments. This is an hour where we need to hear that clarion call. In Joel chapter 2, it says, sound an alarm. And that alarm is a unique sound. And those that recognize it, when they hear it, immediately jump to action. And they know what to do because they've been trained by that sound. May we recognize the sound of heaven crying out the wake-up call to His church and be called to action. We are meant to be a people of prayer. Everything we do is to be built upon prayer and the fellowship of the Word so that the Word moves through us. The Word increases through everything we do. Edward would go on to say, He calls you to seek the Lord in a different way, for a different meekness. He cries to you three times to seek the Lord, to seek meekness, and to seek righteousness. There has to be in us a groaning and a crying and such a holy desperation when we get before Him. God, I just want to be consumed by You. God, I just I have to know You. Would You teach me Your ways? Would You show me? Would You lead me? And cling there until we get that touch, until we are taken further than we've ever been, to go further, deeper in the waters, and to know Him. Are we satisfied with knowing about Him in the Word? Or is there something passionately growing on the inside of us that, God, I've got to go deeper, and that we become hungry? I love to say I'm so hungry. I can't imagine anyone, Lord, being more hungry than me. And I don't mean that to sound wrong, but I want within each one of us such a desperation that you can't imagine anyone being more hungry. You've got to have Him. And if that's in you, it awakens you in the middle of the night. It disturbs you throughout the day that you want to go after Him. Your eyes fixed in Him. You're not pursuing Him for what He can give you through His hands. You're not looking for certain specific needs met. You want Him. You need to know Him and you're seeking His face to look Him in the eyes. And that terrifies us because when we look in His eyes, we know He looks into ours and He sees right into our soul. And He sees all those areas of imperfection, all those areas that we have not surrendered. And that's where the cry for meekness comes. That's where the humility must come in us, that God, I'm so wanting You that I will stand here in your light and allow you to expose anything in me that's not in compliance. Edder went on to say, It may be that you may be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. This is the only hope for you to escape the awful destruction that's about to sweep over the world. There is no other hiding place, no safety in the world. Oh, that you may be hid in the day of His wrath. And as we read Zephaniah, we see that terror. We get a flavor and a taste of what's coming. And right now, as we see the shakings that are happening on the earth, are they awakening us? And are we saying that the only place that we can be secure is hid in the secret place? And that's the place where there's such a hunger in us that, God, we just want to know you. There has a desire to be in union with him. This place of being swallowed up, consumed in him so that I no longer live, but He lives. This is the place where all the old, the flesh, must die. And the cost to enter is the cost of the death of us, so that we, once we are dead, we may truly live. And the new life that we live brings Him glory. Edward goes on to explain, So now the Lord is calling us to eat the strong meat, calling the saints of God to get deeper in Him, they must be filled with the Holy Ghost and eat of the living 
bread by continually eating, we will never die spiritually. The time has come that we must have the strong meat. We can't settle anymore for the water down. We can't settle for the meat, for the, the milk. But in us, God, I've got to have the deep things of you. And if that's what you want, there has to be a cry. We have to recognize our lack and our need. And that he is the source and supply. Because too long we've looked to the world, we look to things to satisfy us. And we wonder why we've become weak. We wonder why we're not the voice and the salt and the light. Because we've been coasting. And one of the things the Lord has spoken to me is being careful not to be carried by your call. And he said, many in this hour are being carried because with the call there comes an anointing. And it's easy to allow the anointing to carry you. I can step up and the anointing comes on me when I'm here to preach. And if I just make the minimum work behind the scenes, all of a sudden that message is anointed because God in his mercy wants to bless his people. But there's no real working in me. And we fall short of what God wants because God always something bigger and greater. And we limit God. And it's a time where God wants to expand the pegs of the tent inside of you to give the vision and make it bigger. Bigger than you. It has to be because it has to be Him. If you can do it, then you will. But if it's Him, then it's going to be bigger and greater than you. And in this hour, He wants to reach a harvest. He wants to touch a generation that looks impossible, that looks it's too difficult. Yes, it is to you, but not if we surrender in the secret place and allow him to turn our world upside down so that every aspect of us is wholly surrendered. How can we preach a word of life? How can we bring a word of deliverance if we are still captivated, or we are still held in bondage? We have to be free in the secret place. How can we share a message of truth and life and say this is real if it's not real to us first in the secret place. We must be so desperate for God. And he is saying, if you will draw nigh unto me, I will draw nigh unto you. Are you going to come by faith and cling and wait? See, a five-minute prayer won't do. A simple coming and say, God bless this won't work right now. There has to be God, I'm after you. I will wait here all day until I meet with you until I get that touch, that freshness from you. This generation is looking for something fresh and living. Listen to this, Edder said regarding Jesus. He gave the Father credit for everything. As Jesus was sustained by the mighty power of the living God, so we, too, must come to a point where we can be sustained and kept by the same way by the power of God through Christ Jesus. Jesus is the role model that we must see. That's the example. That's how we must allow the Spirit of God to stretch us and bring us into that same place so that the world sees a perfect representation of Jesus. They see Him through you and me. Jesus, and I should say the living God, makes us co-workers under Him and with Him. He desires to use human vessels. And he's calling to each one of us. We still put off, well, he would use this person or that person. But he's calling us. He's calling you and me. If we will get that holy desperation that will drive us into the secret place where we plug in never to leave. Where we get desperate for him that the things of the world fade and no longer draw us or entertain us. We want him. How desperate are you? If we see how late the hour is, if we get a glimmer of his glory and what his glory can do, if we see the mightiness of his power, then we would want so desperately, God, fill me, use me, that this generation might see you. In Matthew 7, verses 22 and 23, it says this, Jesus speaking about the day of judgment. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out devils and in your name before miracles? If I stop there, think about it. They did mighty things that surely this is God. They cast out devils. Surely this is the living God. They prophesy. I go on YouTube and there are all these prophetic ministries prophesying about God. Surely it's God. And they even get some of it right. Surely it's the living God. 
And Jesus says, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. If what we do is not forged in the fire of his presence and knowing him, then whatever we do brings him no glory. It may have great demonstrations of power, but if it's not forged in the fire of surrender in the secret place so that He is the one getting the glory. The question we have to ask here, when people look at us, do they see us or Jesus? Do they put us on a pedestal and think somehow we've got something so great, so big that it's us? Or are we pointing to Jesus? Are we lifting up Jesus? so that those at sea can catch it and run with it, and that Jesus is wholly glorified. If we prophesy, who gets the glory? If I do great miracles and wonders, who gets the glory? And that all starts by what I do in my secret life. Does it belong to Him? Do I give it and surrender to Him so that this vessel is His? The Word declares that we don't belong to ourselves. We've been bought with a price. But how many of us accept that? How many of us realize that and humble ourselves and present ourselves before the Master as a living sacrifice and say, I've been bought. I must come. Because He doesn't command and demand, we just pull back. But in this hour, we must understand the wonders of His love for all those that draw close. And that those that draw close that see, receive that touch of life that makes the difference. Many can preach, many can do all these great things, but the thing is, do they have the life? And that life is something you cannot manufacture. It's not something you can make up. It's real or it's not. That life goes in deeper. That life touches and lifts a life. That life gets in and heals the broken. That life restores. That life brings greenness where there once was death. That life always brings people to their greater intimacy with Jesus. Edder said this, To do the works of God and at last enter heaven, we must have spiritually man, our spiritual man sustained and fed by the bread of heaven. We must be supported by the Holy Ghost. We need to drink from the fountain that never runs dry. We should desire and ask for the living water. Whosoever drinks will never thirst. We should jo joyfully drink of the wells of salvation. And I think in this hour, the question we have to continue to ask ourselves, and I'll say it again and again, do we so pursue Him? Do we have that desire and passionate pursuit that, God, I'm locking in. I've got to drink of this water. I am thirsty, God, because there's a law of the Spirit that God will answer. If you knock, He will answer. If you ask, He will ask, supply. And we have to be seeking His face, because if you seek Him, you will find. And if you hunger and you thirst, He will satisfy. So how many of us are really hungry and thirsting for God, desperate for God? Oh God, put in us a hunger. Father, just provoke us today. Stir in our spirits. Let us recognize how complacent we have been, that we've been satisfied with the little when you want more. You want to do greater things. God, we've been satisfied if we get the blessing and it looks like we're getting success. And God, we don't want to be stretched or do any more. But the call of heaven right now is more. And so if we will come because you don't want us to just drink of the well. You want to bring us to the place of the overflow, rivers of living water flowing out of us, where it's no longer about us, but others. Father, impart to us such a vision. Impart to us such a hunger. Edder went on to say, If, when the people obeyed, the glory of God came down and the people fell prostrate, how much glory ought there be today? There was just one tabernacle and two tables of stone. Today your body is the temple of the living God. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And God with his own fingers writes his word on our hearts. And it must be written, God, in the secret place, would you write your word on my heart? Would you scar it, mark it, so that my life is forever changed? 
that it directs the course of my path, that God, the passionate pursuit and the motivation of my life is not changed because of what you do in the secret place of my heart. Father, that every every hole and gap and every space and every part of my life be consumed by you. The secret place yours. Holy Spirit, come and enthrone Jesus on the very secret place of my heart. Come, let him occupy the throne of my imagination and affection. Come, Holy Spirit, and stir a hunger because we must be always pressing forward, pressing on, desiring more. Let us never become complacent and content. But Father, always wanting more, satisfied but not content. We've got a more of you, Jesus. More, more, more. Always hungry. God, use me. Let me do more for you. Let me be found faithful before you. I want to finish with this one. Edder said, get out of the mud and run up the mountains. Bless God. Let us get out of the mud and get cleansed up and dressed up for heaven. Join in the race for the prize. God is filling the people today. There are great degrees of glory, and everyone can take another degree and another and another until you come into the perfect image of Jesus Christ. But you say, I don't want to give up this, and I don't want to give up that. If you had any of the love of God in your heart, you would not want those things that are useless, and that means death, because you would be a new creation. All things would pass away and everything would become new. But the trouble is you don't want to walk in the light. May we be those that desire God, that desire more, that want to walk in the light. Let His light shine in me, change me, transform me. And that place of transformation is when we stare Him in the eyes, look Him in the face, and allow Him access to say to Him, You are the potter, I'm the clay. My life is yours. My rights are yours. I seek your will. I seek your desire. And I delight in it. Oh, in this hour to come to such a place, God, I delight. Fill this vessel with your glory. I want more so that I come into the perfect image of Jesus. Every aspect of my life so in compliance that people may see Jesus. Father, more of you. More of you. Change me. Change me. There's too much of me. There must come less of me and more of you in this hour. Oh, Holy Spirit, breathe on me afresh. Come move in us. Come move, Holy Spirit. We want more, God. We want more of you and less of us. I thank you, Father, that you would stir in us such a passionate thirst and hunger for you that only you can satisfy Holy Spirit, open up our eyes to see ears to hear like never before. And let us know how to abide in the secret place of your presence. That we would say this one thing we desire, it's you, God. One thing we desire, it's you. You are our all and all are everything. In this hour, Father, we don't want what the world has to offer. We want you. We want to rise and shine because your glory is filling this temple. And let it flow through it. And let it bring conviction on the lost. Let it see the backsliders be brought back. Let it bring restoration and healing. Let your name be lifted high through this life. Let me accurately reveal you. Oh, I give you honor. I give you honor, Father, in the name above all names, the name of Jesus. I just love you, Jesus. I love you with every ounce of my being, every fiber, and I give it to you. I surrender it to you. I'm just seeking you, Jesus. Less of me, more of you. Oh, the deep things, Father. We press in. Deep is crying out today for the deep of you. The deep of me, Father God, needs you, wants you, seeks you, pursues you. Fill this vessel. Father, I want to be a vessel of honor. I want to be a vessel of such glory, bringing you such honor. Less of me, more of you. Father, the world would see you and not me. Not me no longer building my kingdom, doing my thing, but you. Father, bring the correction in my life that I need. Bring any rebuke that I need. Put me right. Teach me how, Holy Spirit, to walk along that perfect line. That I would walk faithful, not turning to left or the right, but being found faithful in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing that brings you glory. I thank you, Father. I thank you. Expand the pegs of the tent of my hope and my heart and my passion for you. Bring in the people in my life, the right people that will add 
the right people that will sharpen me, the right people that will enable me to do great things for your glory. I thank you, Father. You are faithful. You are faithful that I might be a blessing to the body of Christ. I thank you, Jesus, that you receive all the honor, all the power, and all the glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And I really pray that this message has blessed you. If it has, would you please like, share, and subscribe. And consider hitting that notification button as well so that you get notifications of new videos. We're starting this new series on The Secret Place, and I want to push it even further to instill and, and disturb each believer to go for more of God, to get hungry, because God is moving and shaking this earth. So let us be found hid in Him. Amen? And would you consider becoming a prayer partner, our financial partner? For more information, simply go to GodsGeneralsAndRevivals.com. And if you don't have a church right now, you can join us online in our Zoom services on Sunday and Tuesday. For more information, simply sign up as a prayer partner and you'll get our email newsletter and you'll get invitations to our Zoom services. Again, go to robertpairs.org or to godsgeneralsandrevivals.com and go to the partner page. Well, be blessed, be encouraged, and remember that this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it because of, through, and for Him. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen and Amen. Thank you.